The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show of the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. Woof, woof. That's me chasing my own tail. I'm old dog Travis McElroy, I'm your jealous. middleest brother. I'm jealous of Travis's thing because he's been doing it. Yeah, you ever it's see those, good, isn't it? You ever see those videos? Hey, hey, hey. You ever seen one of them videos on uh, Facebook where the people share, like, I took a picture of myself every day for 10 years. Yep. And I see that and I'm like, Fuck, that looks cool. I wish I could have done that. But then I think that's ah, too late. I can't well, start the problem doing that you guys, now. you guys lack uh, commitment to really anything, but let alone bits. And that's why if I start doing a bit, even if everybody hates it, I'll just keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. a good bit. And I'm Griffin McElroy. You could start doing it now, Griffin. You know, the best time to start doing an intro bit is yesterday. And the second best time is today. Damn, wow. that's good shit. Except we weren't recording yesterday, so then I would have just weren't. Been, then oh. what was I doing? Um. So, do we have an intro? I thought yeah. we just check in as bro. Oh, okay. No. Uh. Sorry. Mine was more of a faithful. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you uh, know what I mean? Oh, all right. Okay. Cool. Cool. I cool. have to. I have to imagine. Uh, otherwise, why did we start recording? There's a yeah, so, that kind of deal. There's an emptiness in your heart. <laughs> There's an emptiness <laughs> in the in the in our heart in my sh- in the show. On, speak on that. <laughs> yeah, Griffin, follow that impulse. Okay, well, um, when we're doing this show, we rely on the, on the bit on the bits to uh-huh. sort of float us through the hour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. For sure, for but sure. But without sure. the bits, it's just the three of us sort of standing in a big white empty room, and it's so bright in here and it's bright because it's exposing us we are nude because there's no bits to hide our shame behind and there's a uh, there's a huge emptiness here now i get that griffin but maybe that means that this is where we'll do our best work i think for too long the three of us have relied literally for the entire length of the show have relied on uh you know bits yahoo answers uh questions having ideas these kinds of things we've we've relied on that too heavily so what if we just did a whole episode where we didn't make any jokes, uh, we didn't come up with any good ideas, uh, we didn't have any thought starters or wow. anything. We yeah. just kind we've of we've actually as liberating as that sounds. I feel like we've unintentionally tried that a few times in yeah. the last few years, yeah. and, and intentionally it gotten, tried that too, and it didn't go good. The response hasn't been great. We so did do we, a whole episode about war with Grandpa, didn't we? Yeah, we did do the whole episode about war with Grandpa that nobody. But that was except- maximum artifice. So this is the other way around, right? Oh, there's a minimum artifice. Let yeah, me hit yeah, you yeah. with this. Yeah, let me hit you with this. Spring is here. Uh-huh. Shit, shit, yeah, bud. Now yeah, we follow that. Bud. Follow that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spring is here, and that means one thing around these times. This this neck of the woods. It's time for spring cleaning. Okay, time to get out. Uh, some of the parts of this podcast that are not working. Oh, put them out in the dumpster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know, I don't know if we want. No, no. There's you don't want to bring in new stuff while you're spring cleaning. You just want to clear out some of the cruff. Yeah, there's. Let me uh, see so, what's, what's under the bed here. Let can me I see. Bit, can I, I get got something one. That's been I'm bothered. just immediately. Immediately, oh. I'm going to get one out. Okay. okay. Just let me crank it. Let me crank one out. Gross. One. <laughs> J.O. metaphors. <laughs> so that was the last one of those. They're done. I'm getting rid of, in the spring cleaning, I'm getting rid of pretending like I'm ending Munch Squad. I'm not getting oh. rid of Munch Squad. I'm getting rid of, I'm sunsetting the bit where it's 
in its final days. Okay. So ne- so that that bit is now uh retired as they say on um Blank check. We're hanging its jersey uh, up in the sky. The, yeah, the yeah. can me and Travis still make them jokes? Uh, about much? Qu- no, it's it's it, done. It's, the okay. continuity is done. Okay. Like it's important to reset continuity for our show, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, people, yeah. new new listeners, uh, aren't lost. So yeah. that's not a thing anymore. I don't. I don't say that. Anymore. Sure. I'd like to get rid of something. It's just been bothering me for a while. Yeah. Um, the part of the show. Uh, and it's kind of like after we've made everything, right? But yeah. then we still talk for like another five minutes. Yeah. Before the, I, so I would like just get rid of the closing Interesting. part. Interesting. So I just want to end whatever the last thing is, So we right? say a joke, right? And we're like, Kelsey Grammer's dick. And then the MP3 stops. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. No, you know, I think we can leave the silence. Oh, okay. Oh, so that we don't get people like messaging us, like I think the, the got cut off or right. whatever, right? But we just—I don't think we need closing stuff anymore. Okay, interesting. Um, I'm gonna say this, and this is a huge one, and may actually be the most difficult one to actually stick to. And I, this is not for the boys because I do not think I could muzzle them like this in 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 good uh, in good faith. But I am never going to say. The word Frasier again on this podcast. Oh boy. Wow, we're sunsetting Frasier. And uh, there's a lot of our younger fans who I think are gonna be fully fucking stoked about that. Cause they yeah. don't they don't know who this old <laughs> northwestern fucking nosy Jagoff is. His name's Frasier. His name is a word I won't be saying on the show anymore. Yeah. And, I, the, and that's it. And that's it. Hey, can I just say, Griffin, that people are going to think that that was a really good edit by Rachel right there. No, I caught but it. But that was just an amazing self-edge. Yeah, I mean, it was very incredible. Really and it was it, not intentional. I fully was about to say that Northwestern gentleman's name. It sounded like it sounded co- computer clean. That's yeah, how good that cool. self-edit was. All right. I, I, One last thing that I do want to cut from the show. I just want to cut wherever we say the word this. Oh. I don't want to say that word anymore. Any okay. of us. And if we do, we'll put a quarter in the jar. Okay. That's going to rack up pretty fast, Trev. Yeah, but then we'll spend that on ice cream. Okay. We can keep doing all of our great bits, like where we do stuff that's just for people to use on TikTok, right? That right. bit we do all the time. But now you've fucked it up, Trav. The Possibly yeah. the whole show, because now I'm going to be thinking constantly for uh-huh. the rest of my life about that word and how I can avoid saying it. About this? Yeah. God. Sorry. That's a quarter. Um, th- I, one of the things that I've seen a lot of people complain about, and I'd like to discuss sunsetting, is um, the very lengthy introduction sequences. Oh, that are kind of uh, rambly? People complain sometimes. I've seen this. You guys aren't going to believe me, but it's true. I've seen people complain about the fact that we don't do enough questions. Okay. What? Is that... I? I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't know if it's a problem or not. Like, it doesn't bother me, because... They know we've know. been doing this for like 11 years, right? We've answered basically everything. It's thought starters. And right. also, nobody has new problems. They just have same problem. Yeah. Want to leave. <laughs> Tired of it. Want this. to leave. This time. Want to leave. The Long? person they want to ask out has blue hair instead of like red hair or whatever. But it's all the same. Well, that's, redu- that's reductive. No, you're being reductive. What I'm saying is everybody has same problem. And it is brothers want to leave. Right. <laughs> want to do other yeah. Else or how make friends? No, you Travis, you're not understanding. I'm fucking saying there's a pandemic. You've uh, never been on less of the same wavelength as us. Fuck. I guess I just am kind of an introvert, and I've liked being inside. Oh, f- what you've been driven mad without the you, Travis without the 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 incredible power of people uh, applauding for him. Uh-huh. Travis is withered into a a, a, a <laughs> hut. He's like fucking Gary yeah. Oldman in Dracula when he has it fed. He's just lurking around his he's house. Like, he's like yeah. one of the little snot creatures in Ursula's lair in the little mermaid. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tybee actually calls me a Tinkerbell for that very reason. Yeah. Without yeah. people uh, applauding for me, I am dying. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do a oh, show. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Hooray for you. So we're going to do actual questions because this is how, this is, this is real. You know? That's like 75 cents, by the way. What is? You just said, <laughs> just said mm-hmm. the, the T-H-I word. 
<laughs> My partner and I are expecting our first baby in September. Congratulations. After our first midwife appointment, my wife asked me if I wanted to catch the baby at delivery. Oh, boy. Brothers, what is the best technique to catch my child and not experience a big uh oh oopsie on day one? <laughs> this is from Butterfingers, Buckeye, and Akron. And pal, <laughs> you don't nope. listen. Don't do listen. I want to do an intra question, an intra episode disclaimer yeah. here. We're gonna have a lot of fun, and the <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of fun. You should probably just do it. However, the very nice midwife says you should do it. Right when when Dot was uh, born, we did a scheduled C-section, and all morning as we prepared for this, at least three different medical professionals asked me, "When we remove the baby, yeah, do you want to watch?" And wow. I said at least three different times, no, not on your life. Yeah. And then a fourth medical professional who failed to ask you that question got involved in the delivery. Ah, oh, beans. And when the baby was removed, held it up to me like Rafiki did Simba. And I was like, put that thing away. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Wipe it down. Wipe it down. <laughs> what are you doing? And here's the thing that you're not expecting, Butterfingers, Buckeye, and Akron. When a baby comes out, they're going to be a little blue and purple. They look fucked up. Babies, when it's they come out, they fucked up, man. And all, I'm looking at it going, oh, no. And now I say, not it. I would say my daughter, Dot. But in that moment, yeah. oh, no. And the doctor and all the everybody else just kept saying, like, oh, good color. Oh, it looks good. Oh, it looks good. And all I can think is, that's a good color? This so here's bad. my point, question asker. You're going to have a lot on your mind. You don't want to be in there. You're going to have a lot on your mind. You don't want to be in there. I mean, you got to be in there and you got to be supportive, but. Like, yeah. I can't imagine, like, like, imagine you're a Major League Baseball catcher and also behind the pitcher is like some <laughs> kind of monster. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in that room that if you look at it, it's going to fuck you up pretty bad. And so you need to be, you got to keep your head on a swivel in there. I do not think catching, well, it, okay, they're going to have to catch this baby. So what's the best technique? Maybe some kind of, uh, get, okay, you're going to get seven other large people and a hula hoop with like uh, some fabric stretched over oh, it. Oh, I love that. Cause that can like catch people jumping out of windows if the building is on fire, right? So it surely can catch. <sighs> Has baby. anybody ever actually seen that happen? Where they stretch what? out the big the big trampoline and then people jump out of the buildings and they surely catch them in the trampoline. Griffin. That's gotta happen, right? You don't cartoons say surely. Lie. Have you seen it happen? Have you seen it? I've seen it in cartoons. Okay. Now, Travis. Yeah, we've talked about this. I've seen I I've seen Mr. Game and Watch do it. But yeah. that's, uh, that ain't true to life. You know, if there's one thing that I remember from middle school, what you're going to want to do, uh, get a little parachute attached to the baby ahead of time, get some cushioning around it. Yeah. Right? And so that way, even if it falls from like a second story, that cushioning, that uh, maybe you can like suspend it in the middle of a structure with like some rubber bands. Here we go. Now, Travis is building fucking a science fair project where you see how high up you can drop the egg from. Yes, exactly, but with a baby, you see. So, yeah. If 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 we're not, is that not what that test was supposed to be for? Yeah, it was like preparing we're building a prototype you for, the, for this exact moment. Yeah. Um. Hey, can I do a Yahoo? I'd love that. This one was. Uh, I feel so like that whole time Justin didn't say anything about how he would catch a baby. Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, th th but think about how much great free time we'll have when you all are in the court battle of your fucking lives. Okay, um, but don't listen to us. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's enough. That's enough to get. That you ought to do it. Uh, th no problem. This one sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers user Good Vegeta who asks: Should the NFL create a Super Duper Bowl? If, huh. the if the team who lost the Super Bowl had better regular season record than team who defeated them, they can ask for a Super Duper Bowl rematch. It's played in a special gigantic arena with lots more fans. If the team with better regular season record doesn't want a challenge to rematch for Super Duper Bowl out of belief they would lose again, then <laughs> no, the I, next I, season they could use that challenge left over to claim a first seed playoff spot with first round bye. Interesting. Now, okay, I like... The concept, but I don't think that they're executing it the way I would choose to. I think a Super Bowl, right? You have the number one and number two teams, right? And whoever okay. wins should then, in the Super Duper Bowl, one team play against whoever they lost or like whoever lost and the third team, 
Right? So at now it's one team time. against two teams. Oh, that's great. Right? So it's like, okay, well, you could beat that one team. Let's see how far we can go with this. And then no. if they win, you we go to not. the Super Duba Extra Mega Bowl. <laughs> right. And that's one team versus three teams. And you can see where I'm going with that. Right. Now, okay, let me hit you with the, I, I, I twist it. Super Bowl, who wins? Whoever won the last one. Right. Tampa Bay? Does that sound right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Bucks win. But then the Bucks have to compete against the winner of the World Series. Okay. From that year. This is the Super Duper Bowl. Where the winner, the greatest of all the each of the sports gets to compete against the top sport O's yeah. for like athlete, like in, best athlete. Wait, compete in football or in baseball? Trivia, baby. Oh, oh yeah. A meeting of the mind. Now I'm Catch in. flat footed, you see. I like. Oh, boy. I like if we did it WW. And by we, I mean the National Football League, of which I am not a representative. Uh, but I would. It, I think the NFL should follow the WWE in, in how they do it, where they do the, the money in the bank. And whoever grabs the briefcase, they can exchange that to fight the champ right then and there whenever yes. the fuck they bring the briefcase in. So I don't know what this is. The all-star game? Whoever wins the all-star game can like immediately after the Super Bowl, the confetti's flying, they're lifting Tom Brady up on his shoulders and he's, you know, he's he's, he's just, thinking about fucking a mattress. He's doing his whole thing that he fucking does. And then, but you hear, not so fast. And it's the all-star team. Oh. And they get to they get to do it now, uh, and that's okay. a great Can strategy because the Buccaneers are so tired. I'm going to take it and turn it just a little bit, Griffin. Okay. So the Buccaneers have just won. Right. Tom Brady up on everyone's shoulders, think about fucking a mattress, right? right? Then, not so fast. Who's that? It's the Dark Buccaneers. Oh, oh it's the Buccaneers. Shit. It's like their exact replicas, right? They but, have to beat their clones. Right. I love this. Yes. I always love this. Right? It's the best part of like any video game where you have to fight yourself and like you move to the right and they move to the left. That's what I'm talking that's about. That's good know what shit. I mean? Yeah, that's good. Or, or we could just go Final Fantasy VII style okay. uh, where after the after they lift up Tom Brady up on his shoulders, he's thinking about having good sex with a mattress uh -huh. and they're celebrating. But then he looks back on the field and he says, set me down. And he slowly walks back out on the field where the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, uh -huh. is, is there, and he's shirtless, and we're, we do it Sephiroth style, where if you Ooh. really want to win the Super Bowl, you really want to win the Super Bowl, we settle this one-on-one, -on -one, quarterback versus quarterback. Yeah, QB street, on QB. Street ball, just like we used to play, where one quarterback... Th Everybody's got giant heads. Throws yep. it to... To just throws it down the street and then you run and just try to grab okay, it. Okay, they have to pick someone from the crowd. Okay. Right? So that way you know it's like this is all about quarterback skill. Yeah. Right? We're just going to pick because, the, okay, oh, here's the thing. Sometimes yeah. when the Super Bowl's done, right, the quarterbacks get a lot of credit. I feel so right? empty after the Super Bowl is done. Right. No, I was another feel bad. year before the next Super Bowl. Fuck. Yeah. A full I always feel bad for like the other members of the team, right? Because the quarterback gets so much credit. So when the Super Bowl's done, we switch quarterbacks, we play again. Exact same game, oh. but we swapped quarterbacks. Yeah. Now we see how this game goes. But right? they're still gonna probably reflexively pass to their guys. Well, okay, we okay, now the quarterbacks. <laughs> are going to rotate to safety and everybody else is going to move up one spot and we play again. Okay. Right? That's safety, something. Maybe it's punter. I don't want to downplay because I couldn't do any of them, but there has to be a like, and you're at this end. There's right? got to be somebody on that right. team who's, there's got to be somebody on every team in the major sports who sucks shit. But they hey, just, yeah, who's they, just helping like, man, I hope I don't go in. Yeah. That's good. That was me in every sport I ever played up till this point. I'm just happy to be here. We solved it. Yep. <laughs> that was an easy one. Yeah. I wish they were all all slid down that smoothly because it, it normally there's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, can but, I, I? So real quick, this isn't really a question, but I, you know, okay. I I go through the uh, the emails, and from time to time, I think it's important to do just a little PSA here, folks, about getting your question on the show. Yeah. And uh, this this question stuck out to me. Okay. I will read the body of the email, and then I will read the subject line. The body of the email reads, title says it all. 
Thanks, brothers. Wet and wild in Alberta. Okay. And then the subject line is, how do I stay dry at the dentist? Yeah, that's a good, that's yeah. it. Because you've now, it's a mystery, a puzzle box mm-hmm. for us to twist I, and crack open. I would argue here, question asker, the title does not quite say it all. No, there's a, definitely a lot. There's a lot left unsaid here. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little too much room for us to play. Uh-oh. I would say a little bit uh, too loosey-goosey here with how one might be getting a little wet and wild at uh, the dentist. Yeah, that's not great. That's not a place where moisture of any kind is acceptable. No. Because you, you put it, it goes up the tube that it sucks it out fast. Do you guys wish you had one of those just going in your mouth all day, every yes. day? Yes. Yes. Well, I'll never forget, I was a child at the dentist, and yeah. one of the uh, the dental hygienists cleaning my teeth said aloud, you are the spittiest kid I've ever worked on. <laughs> and that is a thing that's really stuck with me over the years. Yeah. A sp- one spitty kid. Yeah. It, I think a comment like that, offhandedly delivered by a professional, is the kind of thing that shapes a young man. That's somebody who would know. Yeah, you know this what is mean? what I'm I saying. like a stranger. Yeah. Somebody who would know. It's really stuck with me. My housemate and I have recently been getting more into puzzles. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? what? Justin? One time I was at a weekend murder mystery uh-huh. at Ravenwood Castle in the now extinct uh, Shadow Stalkers uh, um, murder mystery uh, crew. And uh, they do murder mysteries. And there was one guy there who, of his own volition, he decided he would style himself as a puzzle master. Uh huh. And he would um, not through the organizers no. of the event. He was sort of like a rogue puzzle master. God, I miss these fucking things. It was my, it was my, my Bonnaroo. <laughs> so so they would, he made himself a rogue puzzle master, and he would just stand up and announce, "I have more puzzles." And they and were good. They were good. Were you there for that guy? Uh, yeah, he was there. The, the zombie one. I loved it. Fucking the greatest. It's the greatest thing on the world. Turned out, dude worked uh, at the meat counter at Kroger. Fantastic. And he and he gets his one weekend to be a puzzle master. Greatest country. And he Are you took me? it. <laughs> he seized that opportunity. Yes. Loved it. Puzzles uh-huh. is how he would say every time. And it made, it made me excited about puzzles. Sure. I That was my favorite thing about going to those things, Justin, because the people seizing the opportunities, like that person who, uh, with no affiliation to the organizers, dressed as a werewolf and scared just, people in the woods. So just, just a werewolf and ran around the woods. Yeah, he just wanted to do that. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> one time I was at the murder mystery at Shadow Stalkers, and someone stood up dressed as um, Johnny Depp, pirate, yep. Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, his name was Dave, I think. And he stood up, and I noticed that he'd been there at a few murder mysteries in that exact same costume. And then he stood up at the last day of the murder mystery. Everybody has to stand up without their costumes on and say who they really are. And he stood up, and he was still dressed as Johnny Depp Pirate. And he said, um, I have come to realize that Dave is the costume. Huh. Fuck yeah. Fuck. Yes, the fucking best. Yep. Go live your life. Reclaim Captain Jack Sparrow. You are Captain Batman. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we are. It's a reclamation project. <laughs> We're taking him back. You can't have him, Johnny. We're taking back Captain Jack Sparrow. Anytime we see weirdly photorealistic Johnny Depp at the end of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Walt Disney, I do. There is a part of me that recoils. Slightly like Not anymore. That. You're taking him back. Taking, now he's Dave's. There was a point in history where people were like, I hear Johnny Depp sometimes sneaks onto and appears on it. And it was said in a much different way than it would be said now. Right. <laughs> yeah, now it'd be, I heard <laughs> sometimes when the moon is high, <laughs> Johnny Depp sneaks onto the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, so we put together a really rad thousand piecer of a bunch of colorful scoops of ice cream. It nice. took a lot of effort over the week or so. Now it's just chilling out, taking up a good half of our coffee table. How long do we keep it assembled before we undo all our hard work and throw it back in the box? What's the proper amount of time to bask in our accomplishments versus maybe wanting the surface area back? That's from Pittsburgh Puzzlers. Okay, this is, I totally understand this question because you have kind of like, if if you don't do it right away, which is so disheartening, which can really destroy your confidence, then it's like, how long is enough to take, are you, 
I have this feeling. Are either of you the type of person that would like shellac a puzzle you had up. finished? Yeah, a little puzzle glue. Buy some puzzle glue. No. And, mount, and like frame it? Because you're never in a million years. Because the glue eventually will also wear off and the puzzle will, er- it will erode. I, I would instantly take apart the puzzle. You've wasted your time, right? Making a puzzle is a waste of time. But you've wasted the time in the way you choose. And there's fucking power in that. Right. Yeah. I've decided I'm going to waste my time exactly like this. I'm going to make a picture of ice cream no one likes. And then when you're done with it, you know what you do? You spit in the face of mortality and say, and now I'm going to take it apart because I can, because I'm alive and I'm a human being and I'm going to disassemble it, throw it right back in the fucking box. Just go ahead and burn it. Because it's my it. time and you I'll spit it how I want. You should be allowed to fucking destroy it. There should be instructions on the box. I put it together. And then once it's done, look at it for one uninterrupted minute and then put it down the fucking garbage disposal, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Yeah, throw it up in the air. Can you imagine the satisfaction of throwing it in the air and then just punching right through the oh, middle of it? Shit. Oh, shit. God. You've earned it. Better yet, charge somebody to come do that. Oh, th- that's true. And then say, like, hey, do you want, like, have the feeling of, honest to God, like, destroying five hours of my life? Here yeah, you go, just, bud. Just $25. It. Right. $25. is good. And then you can use that on your next puzzle. This is what I'm saying. Okay. Now it's a gig economy, and that's how we keep things going. You know what I mean? You're a jobs creator now. Hi, I'm here from Puzzler. <laughs> There's no U or E. It's just Puzzler. Yeah. And I'm here to destroy your puzzle. I want to destroy something beautiful. Ah, yes, right this way. Right this um, way. It is ice here. cream. We made it. Yeah. yeah. It, didn't, oh, have it, it didn't used to look like this. It used to be many smaller pieces of ice cream what picture. Do you, do you want me to... Uh, do the lights any certain way or <laughs> no thank you I would like you to would you mind leaving the room you leave the room oh I you don't want you me to want watch me no 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 I'm not one of no, those no. no 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 that's not really my thing uh, no shade but like I really I uh, I just want to take it apart piece by piece one by one. Oh, uh, sorry just before you leave are you ever going to want to put this together or is it okay if I just eat a few or does that bother you <laughs> Six or seven. I'm never going to put it together again. Okay, oh my great, God. Great, I can't great. imagine reassembling the same puzzle. Oh, oh. nightmare. Ooh, I can't remember what it looks like. Are you kidding me? It's right here on the box, Bob. Bob, stop. What are you doing? I can't do this with kids our age. Like the kid, uh, there. If if it's not a one shot, if it's not something I finish in one night, there's no point. I could leave it in the highest cabinet, yeah, on yeah. the tallest shelf, and they would sense it and destroy it. Yeah. Here's the thing that I learned. I used to do puzzles a lot, and then I realized um, I could just like print pictures off the internet if I wanted to look at ice cream. Yeah. And it was yeah. done way faster. Yeah. Or you could go and to here's ice the thing. cream Now store. I knit, which is like putting together a puzzle that can keep you warm. Yeah. You can't do that. With a, like a jigsaw puzzle, you could try, but people will laugh at you. Do they have jigsaw puzzles that turn that are useful at the end? Wouldn't that be cool? Oh. Yeah. I guess it's kind of Ikea, isn't that it? Is yeah, sort of what that is. Boy. Yeah. Basically Ikea. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to head into the money zone, and then we'll tell you about some of our be- beautiful sponsors, and then we'll be right back with more great content. Stay tuned after the break, because we got a lot more coming up, and we don't want oh, you to boy, miss a yeah. single Jesus. second of it right here on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. We'll be right back. Socks, they go on your feet, oh, but where yeah. do your feet go? No one knows. All right. Now let's talk about Bombas. Okay. Bombas is dedicated to making the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. They've rethought every detail. I'm wearing a pair right now. I love the kind of hexagonal support in the middle, the no seam on the toe, but that's not it. I'll tell you, my favorite thing about it, they do more than keep your feet cozy. They help give back to the most vulnerable members of our community. For every pair of socks you purchase, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. And to those experiencing homelessness, these socks present the dignity of putting on clean clothes, a small comfort that's especially important right now. So give a pair when you buy a pair and get 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash mybrother. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash mybrother for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash mybrother. <gasps> what? What happened? Oh, no, Travis. Where did I go? Did you have another fugue state? What happened? Okay, I'm going to do a funny one now. No, uh, you did great. You did great. What? It was so good, Travis. We were so proud of you. That's going to be did... the first ad that we actually get paid for, which is dope. I uh, did the ad already, but I was going to talk about the like, toe jam and 
stuff. Oh, man. Well, I'll try to bring a little bit of irreverent South Park humor here to Squarespace. How you feel about that? Okay, if you could fit Toe Jam in somewhere, it would just mean the world to me, Griffin. Yeah. I'll do it in Peter Griffin's voice. Oh, uh, yeah, I think. Hey, Lois, my brother, my brother, Toe Jam, <laughs> and me is sponsored in part by Squarespace. Stand out with a beautiful website from Squarespace. Yo, you're getting there. And this is the baby one. In Squarespace, you can showcase your work and sell products and services of all kinds and promote your physical and your online business and more. Do the dog. Do the dog. Ah, uh, beautiful, customizable, beautiful, cu woof. Customizable templates created by world class designers. Uh, everything optimized. I'm smart. I'm the smartest one in the family. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. Analytics, analy analytics can help you to grow in real time. Really, not the to alien. Take three runs at that one. Um, you want an American Dad? A little yeah, bit American Dad crossover episode. What? Okay, never seen it. Ooh, free and secure hosting. That's the ghost that's also in American Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And, I'm loving this. And back to Peter Griffin and close it out. And nothing, no patch or upgrade ever. So, now Peter Griffin, but he's been stabbed. Uh, go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now give me that stay down with a beautiful website line one more time, Griffin, but it's Peter Griffin having an existential crisis. What about Griffin McRoy having an existential crisis? Hi, I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we're the hosts of One Bad Mother, a podcast about parenting. Parenting is hard, and we have no advice, but we do see you doing it. Honk if you like to do it. <laughs> Didn't we have a bumper sticker a while back that was like, yeah. honk if you did it? That's what it I was. I think it was honk if you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we not ever make those? those we did delight. make them. I did think they? they're still in the Max Fun store. <laughs> honk, honk. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Biz. So are you. Each week, we'll be here to remind you that you're doing a good job. You can find us on MaximumFun.org. Honk, honk. Toot, toot. Hey, can I do a Yahoo? Yes, please. No. Nickelodeon. It's the Munch Squad. This is a squad. It's time to munch. It's the Munch Squad. It's the Munch Squad. It's the Munch Squad. It's the Munch Squad. It is the Munch Squad. This is the Munch Squad. It's the Munch Squad. Welcome to the Munch Squad. Finish the finish the bite. Finish the bite. Yes, hey, chief. welcome to the Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating, and it's not going anywhere, baby. Nah, baby, it's here to stay. Pringles. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Pringles, uh, this is, I'm going to, I want to start covering NFTs in more detail. Okay. Um, this is not about NFTs. NFTs are, we know. Uh, oh, we know. they're like unique, unique tokens that you could trade online like Pokemon cards, but they're bad for the planet. Because I use a lot of resources, um, and Pringles launched an NFT along with Taco Bell. Are they Pringles real? I, I, I've kept I'm not myself gonna, out of it. I'm actually not going to do that. Okay. I'm not. I'm actually not. Go listen to like Planet Money or something. Mm. But the, the first response to Pringles launching their NFT is from someone who just said, the planet is dying, Pringles. <laughs> <Which> is, <laughs> <laughs> very legit. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. So this news in... Pringles has plucked a new flavor from the far reaches of the gaming world. Ooh. Answering a question pondered by many Halo fans, what would a Moa burger taste like? I don't know huh. what that is. Okay, so Griff, you- I've played Halo. You've played all the Halos. You co-founded a video gaming website, covered video games for 10, 15 years, however long it's been. You don't know- you don't know what a mo is. This is the wildest pull I've ever seen for a video game crossover product. This is Pringles Wavy Moa Burger. Now, a moa is the big, flightless bird-like creatures huh. with two legs, wings, scales from the neck up, and a lizard-like head. Similar to the extinct bird from New Zealand of the same name. So just to double check, what 
the lead on this story would have us believe is that one, anybody remembers the name of that, but two, whilst playing the game and seeing said uh, large bird with scales and whatnot, their thought was, wonder what that tastes like. For those not fluent in the video game Halo's lore, Moa, or like I said, uh, the bird is native to the Halo planet called Reach and is the signature dish of a restaurant chain in that what universe. What the fuck? Just call, so give me a Master is- Chief burger. I'm an idiot. Give me a yeah. Master <laughs> Chief burger with Cortana sauce. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> The bird is native to the Halo Planet Reach and the signature dish of a restaurant chain in that universe. So the gaming community is continually curious about what MOA might taste like in burger form. Really? This is like the longest fucking walk ever. And what's wilder about Just call them Halo chips. Is there was supposed to be a new Halo game and now there's not. And the only thing that makes sense is that Pringles had already made all the chips. Yeah. And they're like, listen, we can't wait for them to finish the new Halo game. The These chips, chips are, are getting sale. Yeah. We have to make the even more insane play of just releasing these chips apropos of nothing for no for reason. Nothing. <laughs> Through Pringles' exclusive partnership with Halo. <laughs> <laughs> the new Moa burger flavor brings the food item from the Halo universe to life with an interstellar twist on the much enjoyed, sometimes written, and often misunderstood Moa bird. Fuck. This bird is based on a real bird that n- went extinct in New Zealand, okay. and now you can eat it. All right. So this is so good. Awesome. But in a Pringle. Thanks, Pringles. I've if, always wanted to there eat. is not a paragraph in here explaining why it doesn't just taste like burger... I'm going to yeah. lose it. Fuck. I'll hit you with that. Listen, they did a Baconator. They know what they're doing. They're experts. No, but this. this is what I'm saying. It's like, uh, okay, go on. Go on. Thank you. I'm just mad, Justin. I'm just uh, mad. The Haloverse has one of the greatest fan bases within the gaming world. Okay. So we had to create a flavor that would deliver on a taste fans could previously only imagine. <laughs> the famous Moa Burger. But and isn't that what any taste in Halo is, right? Like, hey, I don't know what yeah. anything in Halo tastes like. Gareth McGuire, Senior Director of Marketing for Pringles. This is nothing. Yeah. But none of it's anything. nothing. Even us gamers on this podcast don't know what you're fucking talking about, Gareth. I've wondered more about what it would be like to lick Master Chief's helmet than I would to eat that bird. Or the inside of it. Check this out. Let me flip this into a successful business plan. Let me flip it. We have taken... We have extracted the DNA of the extinct Moa bird and put it into a chip so that you can eat it to know what this long dead animal tastes like. That's awesome because that opens the door to Pringles immortality. Like when I, when I die, don't roll me up and smoke me, turn me into a potato slurry mash, slice that baby up into delicious crisps, extrude them and chop me down. Oh, I miss Griffin. He died 500 years ago, but, Mm. Mm. taste him on the pringle that's the technology um in case you're curious they deliver a bold crunch because they're wavy feature yeah. a blend of flavors including garlic sweet ginger and savory beef okay each bite finishes with a craveable slight heat from chili pepper and red pepper that will take taste buds on a journey to new star system Woo! Fuck you Fuck hooray it, Gareth said, we pride ourselves in creating insanely accurate flavor combinations. Ah! This, is, this is a fun one to develop. While Moa Burger has a flavor that appeals to everyone, we expect this to be enjoyed and maybe even collected by Halo fans. Oh, boy. God, I, sometimes this segment, guys, sometimes this one goes down. They're only at Walmart. Pringles tweeted about them on March 3rd. And uh, I got some replies for you guys to the tweet. I got some replies. I'm just going to read some of the replies to the tweet about the chips, the new awesome. chips that are only at Walmart and based on the Spaceman bird. I'm having some, but after eating too many, it gets really hot. <laughs> what? They, they help, please help me. <laughs> help me, they Master Chief. Them holding the chip as if maybe you were doubting it. See, I feel like there's two types of people in this world. People who play Halo and people who shop at Walmart. And there's not much overlap between the two. Huh. Um, oh. I would what? I would argue quite a few Halo players shop at Walmart. It's and that's pretty... not even a judgment call. Just stay with a fact. A lot of people shop at Walmart and a lot of people play Halo. The chance that there's not much of an overlap is small. Right. Uh, are these in Canada too? Unfortunately, says Pringles. 
Yes. This limited time product <laughs> is only available in the U.S. Ah, oh, come on. I want, to, I want to, to try them out. It tastes so awesome. Please let us keep them. Then Walmart says, thanks, Vic. Glad you like it. <laughs> That's not Anyway, yes. I'm Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm 350 billion market cap Walmart just responding to your tweet about the space chips with an with an un, unenthusiastic and non-committal answer I might add thanks no but I said can I keep them okay thanks dude all right no please please I need this okay thank you Pringles you saved my life please don't ever get rid of them wow this is pickle eyed Joe says delicious then Pringles says. There's a high probability your taste buds will enjoy reaching, capital R, reaching cool. new heights with Moa Burgers Pringles. See you at Walmart, Pickle Eye Joe. Rioters burned down my Walmart. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa <laughs> what a shit. turn. And, and he can't get this. No response from Pringles. <laughs> Ooh. Love to that. Hey, what are yeah, they gonna just do a quick it? note, Steve. Next time, don't engage with Pickle Eye Joe. Uh, we, we learned that a long time ago. Yeah. This isn't our first time with Pickle Eye Joe, but... Uh, I will, thumbs up, and then Pringles says, you're about to witness the newest Pringles flavor plucked from the far reaches of the Halo verse. Run, don't walk to your nearest Walmart. Or we'll kill you. <laughs> Kid Skull says, already got some, very yum. And Pringles responds, congratulations, you are among the very few so far who have taken their taste buds to new galaxies by trying Pringles Moa Burger. Then Kid Skull says, I ah, glad you guys are still kicking around in 2552. <laughs> awesome. Sure. Um, it's just rice says, are they at every store? I'm pretty sure we've established they're just at Walmart. Jake says, can I order them online? Nope. Gotta go to Walmart, go Walmart, to, get Walmart to get them. Available in Poland? I don't know. Do you got Walmarts there? Where's are Walmart? you America? I've been surprised by the answer with others. So I'll just ask, are these vegan? This... They're not vegan. Oh, they're not? They got Moa. They got Moa flakes in them. They're wicked not vegan. Super not vegan. They got Moa. Has anyone has anyone tweeted? I want Moa them. Oh, that's good, Trav. Uh, thank you. I'm a professional that's... comedy person. Yeah. Um. Hey, can can I do that Yahoo now? Or are there more incredible tweets about no, these no, crisps? This is all the incredible okay. tweets about the. Um. Because I'm excited about this one. Several people have sent it in. Thanks, everybody. It's Yahoo Answers user Jake who asks in the category entertainment and music, music, rap, and hip hop. Should we get rid of the calendars and dates and just go with the flow? Ooh. Ooh. That's so rad. That yeah. kicks, ah, man, it's tough for me to even feign enthusiasm because I feel like how we wouldn't be recording right now. Oh my God, Griffin, you're so uptight. Okay. Wait, you're afraid of missing doctor's appointments? Just go to the doctor when your body needs it. You know what I mean? Okay. This is, oh, oh what's that? You're late for brunch? No. You'll get to brunch when it's time for you to have brunch, and maybe your friend will be there, and maybe they won't. You know what I mean? Maybe I was late to my job interview, Derek, because I wasn't ready to be interviewed yeah. yet. You know what I mean, Dad? Yeah. Okay? I don't feel like going to college today, Dad. You're just a rock in the middle of the flow while I am a leaf. I'm and a I'm, leaf. I'm, tra I'm traveling down the, way the river. And can I borrow 20 bucks? Give me $20. <laughs> I just need it for Pringles. <laughs> Give me $20 now, because I don't really do time. So yeah. I need that to- Not in the linear sense <laughs> yeah. that you're sort of into. So I need that right now. I'm just saying, what does it matter if you think it's Monday and I think it's Wednesday? If you give me $20, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what's it, what's it really matter if I cleaned my room when I'm really stoned? We're going to have to restructure society, I feel like, to pull this off. Yeah. No jobs, no school, okay. no doctor's appointments. What's other things you use? No birthdays, no Trains. days, right? So, like, no yeah. birthdays, no holidays. It's just there is now. There is okay. now. Okay, now you're talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. This is so good. And that would be dope. That would be so rad for us because then like we could just re like release episodes Whenever. when it's when they are needing to be yeah. released. Yeah. When we have one in us to, to make release. it and not immediately a after doing a very, very long The Adventure Zone recording. Exactly. Like a half hour later. Exactly. We would just Maybe. feel it and fucking do it now. That would be a fun way to explain to someone why you didn't like pay your bills. 
hey, I noticed you're late on this. Am I? Or perhaps the bill did not need to be paid. Well, there would be no bills. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Because mm. when because uh-huh. we're all just going with the flow. The people who make the electricity and bring it to your house will come knock on your door and say, it's time. And then you'll give them whatever money that you have. Oh, that's great. They'll make the energy to give to me. And I have, I don't know, grown some wheat or something. So I'll give them give wheat in exchange them. for the energy they brought. Awesome. And like, right. And then you say, you're going to want to cook that for one hour. And then they'll say, what's oh, an yeah. hour? Because there's no time. So cooking things is going to get pretty fucked up pretty yeah, fast. Yeah, that's going to be bad. That's so be only bad raw thing. foods, which is good, because that's what we should be doing anyway. Uh, How raw, though, Griffin? Raw, raw, raw. What? Okay, question. Sunday morning is the day that I clean the house. Okay. So how will I know when how to sturdy? clean the house? How sturdy? How's got dirt yeah, on how it? How sturdy you clean it? What if hey, I have Justin, do you need to that? set an alarm for when to take a shit? Yeah. Um, no. No, you do it when your body tells you to. Now you That's just gotta right. wait for your house to tell you to clean it. Like your house is your bowels and the cleaning is the shit. And everybody's body does have a point where they look around at their environment and just goes, ugh. And that's when, that's when. You, yeah, that's, that's when, when you, you take a it. shit. Yeah. Well, no. Do you set an alarm for when it's time to wake up? Um, yeah. I do. No, I actually don't do that because my stupid body won't let me sleep. Ah, sleep it's like your body knows better than old Mr. Clock over there, huh? So my body's going with the flow, but I haven't enjoyed that. Oh. I kind of wish it would rain it in. Hey, what if we went the opposite way and uh, nobody went with the flow and we just scheduled everything? There's no fucking flow. Yeah, that's great. I'm just saying like now, like you do have a time when you're allowed to take a shit. And if you miss it, too bad. You know what I mean? Too bad for you. And now it is like an extra super duper preachy episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where it's like they're about to kiss and somebody comes up and it's like, no, it is kissing time's over. It is not kissing time. And then it's like, but love, you can't put a time a schedule on. You can't make love. Well, if you, you know guys what I mean? kiss, we're gonna kill Wesley. Right. That's right. Wesley did a kiss during hug time, so he's fucking dead now. Because we and as soon him. as murder time rolls around, he's out of here. <laughs> he's done. So. You're lucky we only murder on Fridays. Ah, oh, shit, guys! If we get rid of the dates and calendars and just go with the flow, how are we supposed to know when the purge is? Oh man, yeah, that's true. You'll just you'll go up and hit someone in the head with a sledgehammer, <laughs> and then someone's like, "Not yet." Yeah, you go to jail. You're like, "Fuck, that wasn't it." I had. But to- then you can just walk <laughs> out of jail because there's no such thing as jail sentences. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. How long do I have I to feel- be in here? Oh, uh, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> uh, Bye. <laughs> um, so I was at work one day with another coworker. It was really slow, so we were talking about sharing stories. Talking and sharing stories. She got a cu- customer right after telling me something super personal. She ended it with, don't tell anyone I told you that. You're the only one in this whole state I've told. Problem is, I zoned the fuck oh, out when God. she was talking. <laughs> And I didn't hear anything that she said. Since then, she brought it up again, saying, that thing I told you before, what do I do? Oh, boy. That's from Awful Coworker in Alaska. And I think this is great. Oh? I think this is wonderful. Go on. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you. The person on the other end of this question, she got to unload the thing that has been bothering her. You have now that, but that information is very sensitive. You have now become like a cryptocurrency cold wallet <laughs> at this point. Okay. That data is fucking archived yeah. and locked down beyond it's, all it's measure. It's on the blockchain of it's your, on the it's blockchain the, now. You can't get the to blockchain it. of your rudeness, is what it's right. on. And that's great. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes people, I do have to say, sometimes people do tell you things because they do, they are looking for a source of commiseration, but it is also like a heavy load sometimes, and they are going to be worried that you'll let it slip, and now they don't have to, because it can't slip. It won't slip. Yeah. It's not even technically there. It's not there. That's awesome. Now, if you did want to figure it out, is there a way to do that other than... Hey, just so you know, I wasn't really listening to hearing that super sensitive thing that you've only told me. Damn it. Why didn't you fucking listen? Fuck. 
You should listen. <laughs> hey, hey, Griffin, you sound like my brain 10 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> really, you should have listened to their name. Sometimes my brain does that when I'm meeting somebody and they're like, hi, I'm, and my brain's like, pay attention. But b- the brain is so loud saying that, that I don't actually hear the name. Yeah. Oh, you're, and you're looking and thinking like, I'm uh-huh. listening so hard right now. Yeah. Oh shit. I'm doing such a good job listening. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Let me give you a script. So I've been thinking about what you told me, you know, the thing. Oh yeah, the thing that I I don't want you you, to tell anybody ever. You've been carrying, yeah, exactly. You've been carrying around the bird in that for so long. And I read about an exercise in kind of a leadership magazine that I subscribe to. Oh, Leadership Weekly? uh, Monthly, actually. Oh, it's It's not, I don't think it's as good. So I- It doesn't stay as up to date with the ever-changing leadership techniques, but go on. (laughs) What you do is you write the thing down on a scrap of paper. Okay. And then you fold it. And then I'll go burn it for you when you're not around. Okay. And that way you'll be free of the burden. I have really bad handwriting. Is that a problem? It's like it's like not even legible. Can you put it on Google Drive? As, I'm worried about a secure thing. Do you have like any kind of like a typewriter I can use? Do you? How much do you know about the blockchain? <laughs> oh, I know quite a bit. Shit. Okay. Um, ding, 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 ding. I'll have 10 cheesecakes, please. Oh, sorry, I have to go make 10 cheesecakes from scratch. Okay, well, real quick, just- Okay, bye, I gotta go make 10 cheesecakes. you'd feel better if you said it in Big Latin. (sighs) Sorry, let's take that again, and uh, this time I won't, I'll I'll wait my turn to talk. Okay. Okay, maybe you'd feel better if you said it in Big Latin. Okay. Uh, Or with a Cockney accent. uh, It won't sound, nothing sounds quite as bad if you say it like this. Okay. I'm the one what murdered, what's that, sir? Oh, sorry. Let me go help this customer real quick. I didn't say anything. Say it. (laughs) I think you did. I didn't say anything. I'm listening. Say it. Are you sure? Yeah, this is badass. I never get any goss. Fucking hit me. (laughs) Okay. uh, Well, I murdered D.B. Cooper and ate him. Wow. That's a weird pull. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you have enjoyed yourself uh, immensely. We are so thankful that you decided to spend this time with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can, we are going to include a couple of links to places that you can donate to support the Asian American and Pacific Islander community who has been the subject of mounting racial violence over the last couple of years, uh, particularly sort of coming to a head Uh, during the shootings in Atlanta last week, which we are, as everybody is, I'm sure, completely horrified by. Uh, There's a GoFundMe has put together a list of funds that are going to go directly to the families of the victims. Uh, We also included a link to the uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Civic Engagement Fund, which is seeking to empower uh, the AAPI community and also uh, fight for uh, intersectional justice on a sort of broader scale. Uh, again, those those links are in the description. Please consider donating and and do what you can to support your local AAPI community. Um, it's a it's a scary time right now, and and you know whatever you can do to help uh, helps. We also want to tell you we got some new merch over at the merch store this month. We got a pin of the month. It's Sausage to Me, uh, benefiting Feeding Texas. We've got the Empty Bowl pin designed by Samuel Reardon. We've got the 20 Big Dog Run pin designed by Mel Westfall. Uh, And don't forget to pre-order the Adventure Zone uh, Crystal Kingdom, the newest graphic novel in the graphic novel series. It's available for pre-order now. Uh, Just go to theadventurezonecomic.com and then wait patiently by the door until July 13th when it will actually be delivered to you. Hey, thanks to Montaigne for the use for our theme song, My Life is Better With You. It's so good. Go listen to all Montaigne's music. Get psyched for Eurovision. She's going to slam dunk it. And because yeah, from what I understand, embarrass every other country. From what I understand, there is a basketball component this year to Eurovision, which is long overdue. You want a final Yahoo? Absolutely. Here's a final Yahoo sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thanks, Graham. It's a, an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call. Um, Gravy asks, would a lot of people watch a remake of Friends, but the main characters are all goth? Ooh, <laughs> yes, please. My name is Justin McRoy. Travis McRoy. I'm Goth Chandler. <laughs> could I be How more are goth? you doing? Could I, could could I, I be, be more, more goth? goth? Fuck. Just, in, just say it. 
to our brother, my brother, because your dad's fur on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.